Hey YouTube, this is Rubix33 and welcome to part 4 of our PhoneGap tutorial series. Alright, so a lot of you have commented, sent me code, given me pointers, constructive criticism, not so constructive criticism, all kinds of stuff. So, thanks for being so excited about learning PhoneGap. It's been fun to do these videos and I hope to start doing them more and more often for you. So today we're going to cover something that a lot of you have already run into a little bit or run into issues that can be solved through having a config.xml file in your app project. And so the, the config file has a lot of stuff here. I will put links. I actually found a really cool link. Uh, it's, on, it's on GitHub where they have a template uh, config file for you. And this is actually what I have here uh, because they comment it and everything. So it's really self-explanatory for the most part. So I'm just going to go through it really quick, and then you guys can use it and enjoy it. So here's your ID. So your actual app name is going to be right here. you know, And it's a reverse domain name is what they use. So this is like a unique identifier for your for who's making the app. So you can use a web domain that you own or your, your name, as long as it's not like John Smith. Hopefully, you know, it has to be unique. They'll let you know. Um, so I just use natesco.com. That's, you know, that's my domain that points to, to my blog and, and then the actual name, what, what, what the app is compass. So we could change that and it'd be a completely different app by the same per person or group, but it's a different app. So I know one subscriber had an issue. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to happen. You change the name, uh, you can change the name. And this could be what I could change the name to whatever I want. And this is what's going to display, but this is what it's really called. And so I could change this to Fashlight or the greatest app in the world. But if this doesn't change, it'll keep replacing it. Like he was testing it on a real device, and it keeps re you know he made another app, but it kept replacing it. So it was like you can only have one of his apps. And so that that was the, that was what the problem was. And so. That is, is it really, you know, without the config file, you're not really going to get rid of that problem. And it solves it. And here's your version number. So this keeps the versioning. So when you're in the App Store and you you upload a new version and you the version number is higher, you know, 9, a little more bug fixes, it will uh, it will know and be like, hey, there's a new, new update for your app. Uh, a lot of this is self-explanatory, like I said. I mean, description. Okay, it's a description. Describing your app, author information, domain name, email, name, other company references, uh, permissions. So this is a permissions. So this is a device permission. So device ready to get device stuff so you can wait because we always wait for the device to be ready. And then here's our uh, and then how permissions are set up, permission name, and then the value. Or preference name, you know. So per permissions, value none. So we have no permissions. So otherwise, you can do, you can do, go through, you can look it up, all the permissions you want to do, and you can set different permissions. So that's why, I like, I think my, I have set in the config XML file of my uh, Machinist Toolkit app why it asks for all the permissions, and people are like, oh, why does it have all the permissions? Well, it's the config file, and so. For, for testing it is very helpful just to have them all, you know, just, you know, Google the list, find it on phonegap.com of all the permissions possible for Android, iPhone, and then boom, throw it in there and then you don't have to worry about it. But then obviously when you're done, think about, hey, what, what is my app really using? What does it actually need permission for? You know, it doesn't need permission to shut your phone down or, you know, write, uh, uh, write files, stuff like that. So, so you can set permissions right now. There's no none, so yeah, and you still have the the internet permission, so because we need internet uh, for phone gap, I guess, automatically. And then this is preferences, so you can set your preferences. I actually I'll put a link for the permissions for that uh, preferences, and you can set up preferences. So what version do you want to use to build it with PhoneGap? So then this is how basically all I do is I, I re-upload my app with with a config file and I just change this number and boom now when PhoneGap build.phonegap.com builds it, it builds it with the new one. So 
pretty simple. Or if you're building it yourself, then you can build it yourself. And then it doesn't really matter so much. Well, it does, but anyway, an orientation and, and the orientation is, you know, there's landscape and portrait. And so they, they tell you what the other options are. You know, landscape is Y, portrait is vertical. Uh, what devices you're targeting, you want it full screen, hide the uh, hide the status bar, or stuff like that. Some of them are iOS, Androids, or all of them specific. So, uh, th theirs was the minimum SDK of 7. I think that was like, I mean, that was way too many versions ago, so I set mine to 13. That's Android 3.2, that's like gingerbread, I believe. Somewhere around there. Uh, gingerbread, honeycomb, you know, you know, those were only like a year, you know, not 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 so many years ago. You know, like Froyo and Eclair. Okay, that was way too long ago. We don't even need to eat. Hopefully those phones aren't even around. So I, I set mine a little bit higher. You can you can set it lower. I wouldn't go any lower than 7, though, for allowing. I, I prefer 13, though. Uh, and then where you want your app installed. Uh, on common misconception that I've run into is... Android phones, you, yeah, you actually have three types of storage. You have your, you have, well, you have your internal storage, and then you have your like SD card if you have your SD card slot. But in, in the internal storage, it is split. So you have your regular uh, phone storage, and then you have they call it SD storage, but it's not your SD card that you take in and out. It's really confusing. I don't know why they call it that. Who cares? So the preferred external is not your external SD card whatsoever. Uh, so it's not going to install to your ex as, you know your external SD card. It's not. Uh, yeah, I believe you have to write your phone in order to actually get it to do that. So otherwise, you just choose which part of the phone, the main where it keeps the main stuff, or the other stuff. So both both parts of partitions of it are the same size. If it's 16 gig, one the internal is 8 gig. The the SD is 8 gig. So wherever you want it to install. You can add plugins. Uh, they all info about their plugins is right here. Add plugins if you want other plugins. Here's your app icon, so you can just define it right here, just for testing. And then when you feel adventurous and want to spend time, you can actually define it for all the different screen resolutions for all the different platforms. So, and it, one of the subscriber asks is how how do we handle that? And so this is an actual Android app problem, not an HTML problem. And so this is how it handles it. it it'll be handled by itself. Uh, and it also helps for app performance. If you have an older phone, you know, it's trying to load up a 3 meg image or a lot of 3 meg images, even even icon, it maybe not won't come up as quickly or cleanly as, as if it was uh, the smaller resolution. So, And the app splash screen, I, think, I believe the default is 5 seconds. And so, as you have your splash screen, so you open up your app, boom, my my uh, Machinist Toolkit app actually has a splash screen. So, if you try that, it'll have a splash screen, and it's like five seconds, and then, you know, it just gives everything a chance to load, gives the user to look, something to look at, gives you a chance to kind of show off what you got. So, that's where you define your splash screen. You can define it for all the different platforms, like you could skip BlackBerry or... Win phone if you wanted to, Windows Phone. And then here you can define access to external domains. So if you want access to to some blog site or some other website, uh, then you can do that. And this allows access to local files. Asterisk always means just wildcard, whatever file. And then this also is furthermore access, secure access requests. So you do like phone gap and then subdomain. So so build.phonegap or info.phonegap or whatever they have. And then this is browser only. So a lot of this is really well co commented. Uh, there's a lot of other info. So I'll put links so you guys can get going. But here's a, just a quick look at the config file. So you can throw just you just throw it in your project. And then you just upload it to PhoneGap. And PhoneGap will use the config file uh, to compile it for the right version number and set everything up for you. Uh, in Ripple, you're not going to see the splash screen, and you're not, you're not even going to see the icon. But if you're testing on a real device or with the Eclipse emulator, then you, you will, and it'll work. So it, it looks pretty cool. It's pretty pretty fun when you have your own icon and a splash screen, and your app's going to look like it's a real app. It really does belong on a phone. 
you know, your 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 official. So, and then before we get going, I just want to show you quick. If you guys guys were wondering, they they changed how it worked a while ago. Uh, how you upload apps? You can still upload like one private app. You can actually upload it from your computer. But otherwise, now what they do is you have a GitHub account, have your Adobe account, and then you just sign in with GitHub. And so now you can build all your projects from your GitHub. So you private, you can still upload. But now you can choose what one you want to build. So I only have my compass and my phone gap resources. I'll probably throw up my machinist toolkit up there too, eventually. I'm, I'm going to completely redo that one in actual Java. So I won't be using PhoneGap for that one, so I care less if I release it to the world. And so then you just click on it, and then it'll load it. I don't have any more private apps that I can do, so it doesn't work. But so Otherwise, all your projects are open source. So even though it's on GitHub, you could have the thing set so it's not open source, but it needs to be if you're going to be building it with their service. If you want to have something you really want to send to the App Store, you want to sell, you don't want it open source, what I suggest doing is going through other tutorials and they uh, using Eclipse and you can set that whole thing up and you can build it yourself and then boom you have your own app and everything so it's pretty sweet and then also check out the uh, if you if you look at the like for Android if you look at the Google Play Store you just type in like Eclipse or uh, I think it's called like Android IDE or something like that and it's actual it's like it's like Eclipse on your phone and the really cool thing is you can link it with uh like Google Dropbox or your GitHub and so like with Dropbox so I would be I would be developing my app on my computer have it connected with Google Dropbox so it keeps it all synced and then it's automatically synced onto my phone then I click build and actually built the app right on my phone so that's one way to do it and you can actually build apps either in Java or even PhoneGap if you have it set up set up that way so Alrighty, that's that's about all for now. I will see you guys next time.